Right then, guys, welcome back to part two of the Dodge Viper build. So we're on 2K today. So our usual preparation has been taken. We've got fresh paper in the booth. Our plastic storage case is there. We've got our extractor on. We've got our Pro Scale 2K ready to go. We've wetted the tissue, as usual, to stop any dust from re-entering the atmosphere once it lands on it. I'm going to mix 10 milliliters of clear with 5 milliliters of hardener. Our usual 2 to 1 mix of clear an activator, hardener, whatever you want to call it. We're double gloved on our hands. We've got my left arm covered. I've got my full face Scott respirator on. Um, we've got the window uh, cracked ever so slightly. I'm in the room of my own. My bench fan extractor's on. And they are the best precautions we can do when using 2K. So there's our two to one mix of activator and clear. So 10 mil of clear, five mil of activator. We're going to mix that together. Get the chemical reaction started or process started. And then I'm going to throw that pipette away forever and never, ever reuse it again. Do not put pipettes back into the other bottles because you will contaminate them and ruin them. We've then got our thinner. Now, we call for 0.5% thinner. I've been adding, um, sorry, we, we call for 5% thinner. I've been adding 10% to the first mix lately. So if I've got 15 milliliters of combined clear and activator, I've just put in 1.5 milliliters of thinner. And again, with the pipette, stir it and throw it away. Never use it again. Uh, if you're not happy thinning it more like I have been lately, like I say, I'm trialing this to see how it works. Stick to the 5% recommended thinner. And if you're happy how that works, stick to it. But I'm just trialing this to see how it works a bit thinner. And for me, it is working out a bit better. All important step of straining. We do sell the strainers at Pro Scale as well. Get rid of any contaminants that may be in your clear. And then we've got our car securely mounted to our stand as before and give it a quick wipe over with the Tamiya anti static brush to ensure we've got no nasties or anything landing on the surface. And then we've got our 0.5mm Iwata CR Revolution. So we're at about 22 psi. We've loaded our colour cup up with our 2K mix. Uh, we've got our colour cup lid on as well. Quipple over some air. And we're going to put down our first semi-gloss coat of 2K. So as always, we're not trying to achieve that perfect gloss on the first coat. We're just getting down a good semi-gloss finish. We'll let that tack off for five minutes and then come back for our second and maybe third or fourth coats, depending on what it needs. So just be thorough, getting her in around all those nooks and crannies, all the vents um wheel arches anywhere and everywhere that needs to be 2k make sure you're thorough and you get the same nice even finish everywhere that you can so i'm going to speed this footage up a bit don't forget we're also going to 2k all our other components as well they want to be done separately at the exact same time we need to be very careful none of them touch together because this stuff is as sticky as can be uh, and obviously get everything in that case as quick as you can to limit the amount of dust that will land on the surface.
with the first coat of 2k down, those parts are left to flash off for five minutes. Meanwhile, I've emptied the color cup back into the original pot of 2k we had. I've got a fresh one, so I can see exactly how much 2k mix I have left behind. And I'm going to thin this a further 10%. So we would thin the 10% to begin with, and we're going to do 10% more now. So if we've got 10 mil of clear mix still left, we're going to put in another milliliter of thinner. Simple as that, not real difficult. And I find thinning this last coat especially, even if you don't thin the first one more, thinning this last one especially is making all the difference. And that's what I'm testing at the minute. Uh, the next car I do, after the Subaru, because I already cleared that one, I will try nothing in the first coat and just thin the last. And we'll see which one works out best. So like I said, the car's been flashing off for five minutes. So our 2K has gone nice and tacky on the surface. We've got our thinner mix of 2K now. And this will allow us to put down our second wet coat. The tacky surface will reduce the limit of, um, or limit the uh, the chance of runs on the 2K is the word I'm looking for. Um, we can then go around a nice even coat of 2K. Now it is thinner and it will be noticeably thinner. So be very careful you don't put too much down. Uh, but again, be thorough. Again, <clears throat> I'm not going for that perfect 2K. On this coat, I'm putting down a similar coat to what I put down first time. Just being thorough going all around the body. Now, you are going to get dust. I've got a bit of dust in the finish of this. It's inevitable with 2K or any clear coat, really. But we're just going for a nice, even coat. Then we're going to all the other parts out and give those another 2K. And then we'll pop it in the box for a couple of minutes to let the 2K self-level. Right, with two nice even coats of 2K, we popped everything back in the box for 60 seconds or so, and then that will give our 2K another chance to self-level. We'll take it back out and have a look, and if it needs a little bit more 2K, don't be afraid to give it a bit more. As I always say, remember how it looks now when you're done is how it will dry. So if a bit of orange peel, put a little bit more 2K on, it'll self-level and get rid of the orange peel. Now is your time to get rid of it. So as you can see, we've got a beautiful gloss on the roof. I'm just looking all around using the light angled, so look for any orange peel or imperfections. You may find an area just needs a little bit more. Like I say, don't be afraid of putting a touch more down on it. 
I think overall, off the two coats, that body's looking really, really good. The color looks absolutely phenomenal. So back in the box with that, very carefully down the back. Make sure you don't touch anything with it. And a quick look at everything else. I think I see one little spot on the boot lid. So I'm just going to give it a quick go over. There we go. Everything else is looking really, really good. Like I say, use the light for your advantage. Angle it, you'll see any imperfections. And if it needs a little bit more, don't be afraid to give it a little bit more. Honestly, you can push this a lot further than you can think. Right, there we go. There's our 2K done. Airbrush can be cleaned up, everything thrown away. And that will sit in that box for five to seven days now. In the meanwhile, we're going to clean up all the other parts, which is quite a lot of on this kit. So they're all going to be cut off and cleaned up using various UMP sanding sticks and sponges. Look at the instructions. You can see which parts aren't needed. They are grayed out. So make sure you don't waste your time cleaning the parts that you don't need. I would go through first and get rid of those parts and put them in a separate piece of uh, storage or your box, wherever you store your models in. Everything else we're going to cut up and clean up with our Tamiya sprue cutters. And like I say, a variety of UMP thinny sticks and UMP thinny sponges or normal sponges. So lots of locating points to clean off. Don't do what I do and make sure you cut the right part off. I have been known to cut parts off we need, but I just didn't think it was a locating point. As you can see, we've got most of the parts all cut off at the top now. And we're just working our way through. And as you see, there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot of parts this kit, really. I know some of the versions of the Viper aren't very par heavy. This one does have quite a multitude of parts. I'm just going to go through and clean everything up. <clears throat> now we've got chrome wheels. We're going to de-chrome these because these are going to be black. So some big bad Dom, Domestos bleach, in our plastic medicine cup. And you'll see right before your eyes, <clears throat> sped up double time, like magic. There goes the chrome. So nice and simple. We'll rinse all that off with clean water until that's absolutely free of bleach and then we can clean them up get all the bleach off and then they are ready for prime as you can see in less than what a minute two minutes all the bleach is near enough gone and like i say rinse everything under water and then we're going to cotton bud in to dry everything off and clean up any remnants left behind so lots of parts to clean up and mount um i think mounting can be a bit more laborious than cleaning parts sometimes Right, so we're in the spray booth. We've got some Mr. Service of 1500 black, and we're going to prime everything that needs priming in black. And then the engine covers, uh, which are going to be red, are going to be painted in uh, Pro Scale pink. Simple as that, really. So, several light coats of primer, not hosing it on, completely soaking wet. Just build it up. We're going through the Iwata HPC Plus this time, so 0.3 mm needle. At about 18 psi, my standard pressure I use for everything, really. And like I say, lots of nooks and crannies to do, so make sure everything is mounted securely. And it's going to take a couple of coats of primer on each part to get it all evenly done. Like I say, there are quite a lot of parts to do, so take your time. And that's been saying for quite a while now, and a few other guys have commented as well. Uh, clean everything up in one go, priming everything in one go, painting in one go. It's definitely more efficient. It's a quicker way of working. While it can seem to take longer doing things, you are already at the build stage at the end, perfecting together so much quicker. Um, so I think it is a much more efficient way of working. Clean everything up, prime everything at once, paint everything at once, and then you're literally at the assembly stage. It definitely does speed up the process. So it's definitely a technique I will continue to do. So the interior on this, we're going classic black on black. So we're going to prime and service of black. And then I think we'll go with Pro Scale Jet Black Leather on this one. Nothing too fancy in these cars, but the look of most of them. Most of them seem to be black on black. We've got quite a few decals for the interior, including some funky speaker ones. Uh, about 46 date gauges on the dashboard. And a couple of decals for the seats as well. So yeah, take your time going around here. As you see, there are quite a few parts to do. Uh, make sure they're all securely mounted. Mine are mounted with a combination of cocktail sticks through holes, crocodile clips on pieces you can grab a hold of, holes drilled into places in strategic parts, or parts super glued to the cocktail stick. Weigh them up as you go and figure out which is the most efficient way of mounting them. Uh, things like this engine, uh, very easy to do. A couple of coats of primer on those, we'll get that done. And the wheels, wheels are a bit tricky, you've got to get in the back of them as well. 
So always mount them so you can get in the back of them. So I got a few coats on the front and then we'll go in behind and get a few coats in behind. So I tend to spray wheels at an angle. That way we get in all the nooks and crannies. Once the primer is dry, we've got some Pro Scale Jet Black Leather. And I'm going to prime all the center. Now, I did plan to flock the interior on this, but this is when we did our Halloween sale of Pro Scale. And myself and Hannah were literally run off our feet. We, we were trying to keep up with orders, but it was manic. So my helpful flocker was out of action this day. So I opted not to flock it. I refuse to flock in my cave. I get covered in the crap. Uh, it's not crap, but I just... I am terribly messy at doing it. Uh, Hannah doesn't get any anywhere at all. Me, it looks like someone's been dusting for fingerprints when I've used it. I don't know why. I'm just a bit of a calamity with it. Uh, so Hannah's the official flocker. Um, because she was a bit busy, I thought, do you know what? It doesn't really matter. We don't need flock every single time. But if you do use flock, get pro scales, get some nice enamel paint, and it's really nice and simple to do. On the front of the... Uh, engine bay we're going to prime this sorry we're going to paint this in i'm trying to think what i painted that in because that's a pro scale bottle on the bench because i would have thought i'd have used oh it is <clears throat> it's tamir lp5 i changed the lid on the bottle i remember now i was confusing myself yeah it's decanted tamir well not decanted it's thin, pretty thin tamir lp5 in a pro scale bottle i was confusing myself then and like I say, some Pro Scale Pink Primer on the engine covers, because these are red, as are the cam covers as well, which are already done to the left. So a couple of coats of this, because these are getting painted red later on. And um, Pink Primer absolutely makes red pop like you wouldn't believe. There we go. Nice and simple. They are what a HPC Plus doing its job. Absolutely brilliant. And then on the way... Uh, Brakes. Now, there are some lovely decals with the kit, but I thought, nope. Uh, I don't think these ever came with carbon ceramic discs, but mine did. So these are carbon ceramic discs with pro scale carbon ceramic paint. So a couple of coats of that on each one will give us the look we want. There we go. And on the wheels, I just went for deep black, pro scale deep black. It's the same color we did the stripes. Now, I did contemplate glossing these. And I thought, you know what? It'll give a nice contrast between the beautifully glossy body and the satin color wheels. So I opted not to gloss them in the end. Metallics, we've got some Pro Scale Aluminium, which we're going to do several components of the engine bay with. The Pro Scale Metallics are absolutely beautiful. This is a whole range of metallics being developed by myself. We've got several in the range so far. They are super finely pigmented. They spray absolutely beautiful. The coverage is phenomenal off them. They cover absolutely amazingly well. And yeah, I hope to add a whole host of different colors to metallic range. This is Pro Scale Steel now on the exhausts again. And the coverage, it's just phenomenal. It really is amazing coverage. And they are so finely pigmented. They look absolutely beautiful. Same on the exhaust manifold or headers. Just a couple of coats. See, no mucking around the spray in there. And then we've got some Mr. Color GX3 red, which we're going to use to paint the red engine parts in. So thinned with a bit of Mr. Level and Thinner. A uh, couple of tack coats and then a wet coat at the end. And these are beautiful paints. <clears throat> really nice. Drive a nice, not quite gloss, but a nice deep luster to them. With the engine all painted in aluminium as well, looking absolutely phenomenal we can glue some of our components in there. So we can get our cam covers in. Beautiful contrasting red on the aluminium color. They are handed as well. They only glue in place one way. So nice and simple to do. And then we need to hand paint some of the uh, details on top. I'm not quite sure what I'm pointing at. I'm pointing at something. Something's over there. Look. Over there. So yeah, steady hand again. Some Velo model color black again. Actually, no, it's not. Tell a lie. It's Tamiya uh, X18 enamel is what this is. I can tell by the lid. So again, beautiful paints the brush went with. Uh, just several components to do. Now, I did contemplate wiring the engine up and decided against it. I kind, I'm going to be honest, I always am on super builds. I kind of started to lose interest in the build. This car just doesn't do it for me at all. The kit's not bad. It's not bad at all. I've built a lot worse in the past. 
Um, I did enjoy building the kit, and the colour of the car is phenomenal. Just this car does nothing for me at all. And I think it's important when you're building something, you have some sort of passion or affinity with it. It drives you through the build. And for me, I was doing this for two reasons. Not for myself at all. I was building this for Tracy. And because it was a gift from a good buddy, Andrew. And Andrew, I appreciate it as a gift, mate. It is a nice kit. You're all right. It's just a Dodge Viper does nothing for me at all, buddy. Um, the only thing I like about this car is the fact it's got a V10. And other than that, I think it's not the best looking car. Although the SRT10 is probably the better looking of the lot of them. Uh, but they just don't float my boat at all. They really don't. I think with the American stuff, I think it's the older stuff that I like. Um, but anyway, I digress. So we've got an Eddie paint marker pen here. This is actually a paint marker pen in silver. And we're painting some of the pulleys. Whether it's correct or not, I don't know. And then the inner manifold can pop on top as well. It's a beautiful engine, this kit as well. It really is a nice engine. A little bit of glue in the back to hold this. And then we can get our exhaust manifolds in place as well. This cheap CA glue from Amazon and those CA applicator points are absolutely brilliant. Some of my best finds on Amazon so far. Um, you can find them in the link down below on my Amazon store. Getting the exhaust side pipes in as well. You don't see these at all, really. They're kind of hidden underneath. But they're all painted up and glued in place. I think I did actually get stuck to them at one point. But there we go. And then the Viper decal for the engine cover as well. Laid in place. Went down absolutely perfect. Looks really good as well. Adds a nice touch of detail to the engine bay. So there is raised writing on the engine cover. So you could paint it if you wanted to. Uh, but if you are going to use the decal, just make sure it's all lined up properly. And then if it does move or fly off like that, that you glue it back in place and get it all set in place properly. There we go. Now, all the arms, suspension arms, need painting up. So we've got some uh, Tamiri enamel. I think it is X11 chrome silver. Our Windsor and Newton Series 7 brush. I think it's a number one brush. And we're going to go around and brush paint everything. Now, the enamel paints from Tamiri are phenomenal, but they don't like being handled for quite some time. They take a long time to dry. So on parts like this where we're not going to really handle it, they are perfect. They also are not a big fan of the Tamiya washes either because the washes are enamel. Uh, and obviously enamel or enamel, it reactivates the enamel. So if you're going to put a wash on, be careful. I would recommend thinning the wash so you can just put the wash on and leave it be. But we're going to go around all these suspension components and hand paint them all. Now you could mask these up should you wish. But for what can be seen, which is not really a lot... I sometimes think it's just worth brush painting. And I'll be honest, I actually quite enjoy brush painting from time to time. It is actually quite nice to do. I know I say this a lot. I know I repeat a lot of things, but it is. It's true. I do br enjoy brush painting. So not a bad thing. And it is nice to get back to your roots. Now we've got the rear differential in place as well. So that's just glued in place with some CA glue. And then we're going to brush paint the same chrome silver on the calipers. Did contemplate going with gold, and I thought, you know what, silver will look good against the black wheels. There we go. And a couple of dabs of CA glue, we can get the lower suspension frame in. Uh, like I say, it fits together quite well. No real problems in the kit at all. Um, nothing that jumps out at me. I'm not, not keen on the glass later on, whether the glass amounts to the rear, but we'll talk about that later. But overall, the kit's actually quite good. This is one of the harder ones to find, the SRT10. Uh, but if you're looking for a Viper, this is the one I go for, definitely. After seeing some of the lads building up the other ones and their issues they're having, yeah, this is the one I go for. So some CA glue on the mountain points for the engine. We can get it in the prop shaft first, or the drive. What do you guys call it over there? The drive shaft in the center? What do you call it? The prop shaft in the center? Well, I do anyway. We can get it all in place. Glued in. Hold it for a second or two and let the CA glue grab it. There we go. That is a very big, shiny engine. 
and then some decals for the uh, calipers as well. Just get those in place, set them in place with some decal solutions as per usual. There we go. And then the wheel center decals as well. Pop them in place, usual procedure, get the moisture out from behind and hit them with the decal solution. Oh, or drop it on the bench. No idea where I'm sticking it back on the stand. It's already painted. You just hold it. But yeah, get everything centered, then hit it with decal solutions. And then getting these on the tire, these were tough to get on the tires. These were very tight. So be careful here. And I just hope you've got good paint on there because I could see the tire dragging some paint off. Thankfully it didn't because I'm using Pro Paint from Pro Scale. Uh, so yeah, just take your time here. And push them on, but they are a bit of a tight fit, those. Now we've got some decals. So on the interior, we've got some speaker decals, which you can't really see on the black and black interior, but we'll pop them on anyway. Now, it's quite a minimalist interior on this, uh, and I'm not going to town on it. This was getting to the point now where I just wanted to get it built. I just wanted to get it done, off the bench, bish, bash, bosh, out of the way. So no airs and graces here. I just want to get it done. So there's four speaker components to put in place, two decals on the seat, about 43 decals on the dashboard. Why you need so many gauges on the dashboard, I do not know. But look, there's one for everything there. It's absolutely madness. It's, it's like pilots in the submarine. But yeah, a lot of decals there. So they're all set in place. And then we can start gluing our seats in place. And like I say, no flocking sadly on this. I would have liked to, but my little champion flocker was busy. There we go, glue the seat. Now, I did notice the seats seem to be handed. They did fit in better one way than the other, so test fit them before you commit to glue. And then the door cards, again, some strategic gluing. So it can't be seen. And then there's a little lip around the edge. It just sits in place like so. And then we can get our interior tub in place. A few dabs of sea glue on the locating point. There we go. We painted our header tank and our brake master cylinder in the engine bay already as well. And there we go. We can just leave that to dry for a minute. Clear parts. Now, no mask set with a kit, which is really annoying. So I had to mask all these by hand. So using some Azu tape, just following the frosted edge around and then filling the center. Nothing too difficult. Standard cleanup of UMP sponge and the buffer. Just get all nice and clean. And of course, test fit everything before you commit to gluing anything in place. Uh, I don't like the way the clear parts on the back mount. Um, they were a bit precarious. And it did kind of push the boot lid back a bit, which introduced a gap you can see now. So yeah, a bit of a pain, but... They did fit all right, to be fair. So there we go. This is our mask. And done. like I said, I've used Azu tape, fold the frosted inlay inside, and then infill the center with Tamiya tape. So it didn't take too long. You've only got the front and the rear to do. So it's not the end of the world. It's just be nice if every manufacturer gave you a mask set with every kit, but they don't. So you've got to work these things out for yourself. The glass on the kit, not too bad. I've seen a lot worse before. Not too bad at all. So we're going to mask the front and the rear exactly the same. There's the front one all done. And then while we're just waiting to do that, we're going to put some chrome paint in the rear light. So using the Edin paint marker pen, we've got a nice uh, edge to follow around here. I'm just going to fill it all. Like I say, this isn't like a normal marker pen. This is actually a paint marker. It does bring, if that is paint I'm laying down. They are very good. They are not cheap at all. Um, but they are fantastic for jobs like this where I'd have to brush paint it. Um, the finish is phenomenal. It's very delicate, though. You can't really handle it. But it's more than enough once it's dry to be able to glue parts in. And I'll be honest, if you do this and then push the parts in, it will hold the parts in as it dries. We're also going to paint all the interior black as well and all inside that boot uh, trunk area too. Using our Vallejo model colour black and a nice flat brush. Getting all those nooks and crannies and get everywhere painted. Don't worry if you're getting on the exterior. It is 2K clear coat. 
so it will wipe off. I did polish the exterior, um, but I only flatted it back with 8,000 tries of pads and the UMP polished because the 2K was that good. It really didn't need a lot at all. It was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, like I say, I'm still toying with the ratios on the thinning, but I think, yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're getting better and better. We're just trying to improve what is already perfected and making it a bit easier to use. And I think, yeah, definitely thinning the last coat is beneficial on the 2K. Um, but yeah, there we go. So there's all the lights in place. They're say glued in place. Windscreens in place, as you can see as well. Little spotlights for the front are in. We've got our headlights around, uh, glass there as well. I'm just painting the surrounds, well, lining the surrounds with a Sharpie that simulates the rubber around the edge. A nice touch that adds a little bit of depth to your model. So once that's done, we can let it dry. We're going to paint the indicators with some clear Tamiya X paint. I think it's X27, is it? I think the clear orange. Just using a micro brush because it was a perfect size. And then some dabs of strategic uh, Bob Smiths. This is the non-fogging glue. Again, links for all these products in the description of the video. You can find them all there. And then we can pop the headlights in place. I just wiped it on my t-shirt to clean it as well. I get my finger from myself from behind it. So line up one corner, push it down, push it in place. There we go. Again, they fit really, really well. Same on the other side. Like I say, I've got no real complaints about the kit other than the subject matter. The kit's really good. It's just a subject matter that does nothing for me at all. Um, the chassis clips into the back on the rear diffuser. There's two, they're a bit vague, but there are two locating points on the back. Obviously a side exit exhaust on this, so there's no physical exhaust to see. And then just clips in place at the front. Not the most positive of fit, but it does go in and it does sit on all four wheels, thankfully. And then some CA glue for the side scare pieces. And again, remember how they fitted in the first time? You have to get that little corner in first like so, and then the front, and then the back. And there we go, we'll hold that for a few seconds and let the CA glue grab it and then repeat that through the side. There we go, again, get the corner in behind. Oh, there's my uh, compressor. I must have a leak on my compressor because it's not even touching an airbrush, it's not even connected. The hose is laid on the floor right now. So we'll have to look at that. Rear lights, we've got some Bob Smiths again onto our chrome paint we put in there earlier. And then the rear light reflectors are already colored in red. So we can just pop those in. Line it up and then push it home. And then mirrors. Again, Pop them in. Some Bob Smith's gold here. Just get a hold for a second or two. Always takes a little bit longer to grab the Bob Smith's. But it doesn't haze or fog, so it doesn't leave any white marks behind. There we go. And it gives you time to move things around as well, which is really, really nice. Rear spoiler. We've already test fitted it. I put a couple of little tiny dribs of Bob Smith's on there. Then line it up with our stripes. Just very carefully making sure it's straight and equidistant. And there we go. We'll leave that to dry. And then the final touch is our fuel filler cap, which we painted in black to match the rest of the car. And I was going to say, how good does that paintwork look? Whoa, what a color. Pro scale delivering the results yet again. Absolutely amazing. We've got some UMP shine now, which we've wiped all over. And we're just going to clean up. And buff up to a nice high shine but how good does that finish look considering i barely polished that 2k at all um yes that is working phenomenal now my tip here is leave this final polish till the next day make sure all that bob smith's gold has dried it does take quite a while to fully cure and you don't want to do this 10 minutes after gluing mirrors on or lights and then dragging a bit of two uh ca glue all over your 2k so I always do this the morning after. We can clock my watch in a minute. It'll be early morning 
it'll be about 10 a.m. Engine bay looks good. So yeah, always leave it overnight. I usually finish a model of an evening and then the next morning, this is my first step before photographs. So I don't know if we're going to clock the time at all, but I will put money on it that it's about 10 a.m. in the morning. So that way you know that the uh, Sagal is fully dry, but what a finish. Absolutely beautiful color. Stunning looking car. Uh, for a Viper, it does actually look good. And I think all the black on green, it looks super aggressive. Like I say, pro scale paints. Yeah, putting the pro in pro scale, definitely. Looking absolutely fabulous. There we go. Not a great subject, but a great kit. Really can't fault the kit. It's good. It's just not an inspiring subject for me. But I did this for two reasons. Mostly for Tracy. Hope you're up there, buddy, looking down on us. And a big thank you for my buddy Andrew for sending me the kit originally as well. So there we go. I've got a few pictures of it. Not got many of this one, unfortunately. Um, but what I have, you can see the beautiful depth of that green. The depth of the 2K and the black on green just looks really menacing. So this was primed. I've got to try and remember now. In Pro Scale White Primer, several coats of Pro Scale uh, Chrysler Snakeskin Green. We masked up and sprayed the black lines with Pro Scale Deep Black. Uh, the wheels are the same deep black color. The spoiler is Tamiya uh, decal film. It's all 2K to the 2K system from Pro Scale. We gave her a black Tamiya panel line wash. The interior is jet black leather. Sorry. Uh, the engine bay is a combination of Pro Scale metallic paints. Um, some red accents and some decals that came with the kit. And like I say, overall, the kit, I can't fault the kit at all. It was actually a decent kit to build. Um, being Revel, it did have its foibles, obviously. Uh, I didn't put a number plate on it. I just realized I didn't put a number plate on the back. Oh, well. Um, but for me, the Viper subject, it just does nothing for me. But there we go. There's another one off the bench. A great memorial tribute to our dear friend Tracy. And uh, let's go back to me with some final thoughts. Right then, there we go. All done. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a double-edged kind of, not sore, but yeah, a bit of an odd one this, because no real affinity for the car. It does nothing for me, but it's a cool-looking model. I'm trying to find it in the display case. Where the hell has it gone? I've lost it. It's gone somewhere. Um, yeah, it does nothing for me as a car. Uh, as a model, it was actually a decent model for Revel. Not bad at all. Good engine in there. Uh, the interior wasn't bad. Uh, running gear, everything went together with no issues. The clear parts went on okay. Not very impressed with that rear glass on the top of the uh, tailgate, but I guess it's how it is. But everything fitted well, and overall, it was an enjoyable build. Just not a very... What's the word? Not a very appealing subject for me. And I think you need to have a bit of passion for what you build to enjoy it and yeah when it's lacking a bit it's kind of a case of let's just get it done which we have here uh, more than happy result the paint absolutely amazing pro scale paints what more can we say uh we've got a new slogan that rich blondin kind of coined um pro results with pro scale and i guess that's showing through um the paint work fantastic 2k amazing uh, all the metallics looking phenomenal pro scale really doing its stuff there so very happy how it turned out so yeah another off the bench i'm not sure how many i've built this year now but we're cracking on though uh i'm not sure what's next there's no no indications anywhere at all is there what's coming up next um but yeah there we go another build off the bench don't forget these are patron exclusives for six months then they go over onto ism uh there will be the condensed build which will go up in a few days time after you see these um, and that's the one that goes public on ISM in about a month. Um, and that's it. So there we go. Another off the bench. If you're building yours as well, keep the progress going. Let's do this for Tracy. And uh, my birthday build, which starts in four days, is coming up soon. Um, and that is any kit with a number in the name. So for me, I'm doing the Gordon Murray Automotive T50. You could do an R34 Scarlet. As long as it says on the box the number... So you could do a Messerschmitt 109, a Tyrant 6 tank, a BF, uh, I've already said that. You could do a Fokker Wolf 190. Um, yeah, anything with a number in the name, you could do Mitsubishi 2000 GT, um, things like that. So Toyota 2000 GT. Is it 
Mitsubishi. Yeah, they both did one, didn't they? Mitsubishi 2000 GT and a Toyota. So anything with a number that's actually on the box is eligible. Opens it up massively to all different genres. And it's my birthday builder, which always start my birthday, which is Tuesday, and runs until New Year's Day. So you get about six weeks to take part. I normally pick a specific subject, but I left it a bit late this year and kind of ran out of time. So, yeah, yeah, we're not doing that one. So I thought I'll open it up a bit more generic and hopefully get a few more people involved. Like I said, I'm going to build a Gordon Murray Automotive T50. Uh, and I'm looking forward to starting it. I'm just trying to figure out a colour for it. There we go. Don't forget, like I say, only you patrons get to watch us right now, especially on this channel. It's exclusive on this channel. So please leave a comment down below. Let me really think of the build. Part two will be along very... Uh, not part two. You've already seen part two. It's already done. Um, the condensed build will be up soon. And we'll be moving on to the Subaru next. And then on to my birthday build. And then I'm going to go back to that Cadillac. Foose Cadillac I started a while back that I did in the flip paint as well. There we go. Thanks for your continued support, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.